Good morning, everybody. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. We got at least one excited this morning. Maybe the rest of us will get there. I hope that you are excited to be a child of God this morning. If nothing else, that's enough to shout and rejoice over. Y'all stand with us in worship this morning. One more time. Come on and sing it with us. I needed rescue. My 
my sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. Cause you called, you called. Changed, changed you forever, and I'm so thankful. And that's the reason we do everything that we do for the Lord. And for our ushers who come, we receive our tithe and offering today. Thank you for giving unto the Lord. You make the kingdom possible, doing the work of the Lord possible by your giving. And we're just so thankful. Brother Richard England, if you'll stand and pray over our tithe and offering today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, good morning, East Sparta. Good day to be in the Lord's house today. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hey, if you're here for your first time, if you're just here visiting, hey, folks, we just want you to feel welcome. We just want you to join in here and worship with us and just make yourself at home because here at East Sparta, you are at home. Amen. Glory to God. Hey, I do have a few announcements. Hey, I heard something this morning in my Sunday school class. And speaking of Sunday school class, if you do not attend a Sunday school class, maybe if you've just joined the church and had not really found one yet, I just want to encourage you to. Sunday school class is so awesome. It's just a great time to learn and grow. Uh, Brother Larry and uh, Brother Greg does such a great job with our class. But uh, I guess I had never thought of this before. Who would have thought that? But anyway, it said, uh, uh, somebody asked, the pastor said, what's more important, to pray or to read your Bible? Well, the pastor looked at him and said, well, what's more important, to breathe in or to breathe out? That'll preach, pastor. That's pretty good stuff. <laughs> I think, I think y'all have all done heard it except for me. I don't know. But anyway, that, that is absolutely true. Uh, we do have some announcements. We do have a lot going on uh, at the end of this month. Uh, Saturday, the 24th, Power Up with Vacation Bible School. This will be from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. from ages from kindergarten to 8th grade. If you have any more information about that, just see Brittany Selby. Thank you, Brittany. You do a great job with this. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Wednesday night, July the 28th, will be our back-to-school celebration. And this will be from a uh, great... From kindergarten to 12th grade. This will be from 5.30 to 7.30. And they're going to have pizza, bouncy houses, and obstacle courses. Okay? Uh, that will be a great time, too, just to celebrate our kids. And Because, you know, I, I believe everyone here will agree, you know, the, the youth is the future of this church. You know? And you're only going to have what you put into it. Amen? Amen. And, and, and Brother Philip and Christy, y'all do a great job with our youth. We just want to thank y'all as well. And, I, and I'll tell you something here at East Sparta. You could, you could sit here and just go on and on and on about the di different lead people that we have in leadership. There's teaching classes and doing this and doing that that all do such a great job. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, also, our T-shirts. We, we've got new T-shirts designed. There they are. So anyway, uh, if you are interested in a T-shirt, uh, they're $15 a piece. They will need your money in before they order them. Uh, you can see either Sister Beth or you can see Sister Beth today or by next week, okay, and get your order in. And also coming up, August the 1st is Pastor Appreciation Day, okay. That afternoon, there will not be a PM service, but there, we will be having a meal 
after service. The church will be providing the meat, and they just ask everyone to bring in a side dish, dessert, or just, you know, whatever you're the best at, okay? But we do like sliced tomatoes and green beans, okay? <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> All right. It's just good to be in the Lord's house and come to the Lord with a smile and, and joy in your heart. You know, uh, I, I, I just I always think that when you can do that, it does open you up for the service that day and what you're about to receive. And, and, and folks, I just want to tell you all something. I love you, and you all are looking great today. Amen? Absolutely looking great. All right, so that's, that's Pastor Appreciation Day. That's August the 1st, um, and there's no p.m. service. Okay, next month, and this, was going, this will be August the 4th, on Wednesday nights, they're going to start back having our meals, Okay. Uh, this begins at 5 o'clock. There is a sign-up sheet out front that you can sign sign up. And, and what that does is just sort of gives them an idea of how much uh, food they need to prep and just what all the, they need, need, do need to get together, okay? Uh, the cost is that is for $3 a person or $5 for your whole family. Now, Lord, that's, that's cheaper than McDonald's. That, you know what I'm saying? You feed your whole family for $5, that's good stuff. So, but anyway, like I said, we just got a lot going on here at East Sparta. There's so many people that do an awesome job in different areas of this job or church. And really and truly, we're so blessed to have these individuals in place. And, and God is really moving and, and using people in a mighty way here. Amen? Amen. It, yes. The first week of August. Okay. Okay. For maybe y'all up, upstairs that didn't get to hear that, the first full week of August, what we're, they're going to, the contractors are going to come in. They're going to take the pews up. They're going to move all of this. They're going to put down the new carpet uh, for the foyer or for here and upstairs as well, okay? So that, that'll be exciting. And uh, it'll dress this place up a little. Glory to God. Hey, if you're able, let's stand and go to the Lord a word of prayer, please. Dear most gracious Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you today. Lord, to thank you for the day you've given us, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for the freedom and the opportunity to be in your house, Lord, to praise you and to lift you up, Lord. And Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for everything that you do for us and everything that you're doing here at East Sparta. And Heavenly Father, we ask you please be with the praise and worship team and our choir. As they lead us into service, Lord. And we just ask you to please be with Brother Dotson, Lord, as he brings forth the word. And Heavenly Father, we ask you to just open our hearts and clear our minds, Lord, so that we can receive this word and apply it to our lives, Lord, as we travel out in this world to reach lost souls, Lord. And Heavenly Father, once again, we just want to thank you, Lord, for the great love that you showed. And you continue to show us each and every day, Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. And we all said, Amen. Amen. Are you thankful for that glorious day whenever you are set free and the chains of yesterday don't hold you anymore? Two people. Cool, cool, cool. Well, maybe we'll get some more rejoicing by the end of this. I'm getting ready to leave this old world, and I hope that you are too. Come on and sing it with us.
Come on and give him some praise in his house this morning if you're getting ready to leave this world. Father, we thank you this morning that because of the glorious day, whenever you came and you saved us, you set us free from everything that holds us separated from you. Father, that we have the promise that we can leave this old world of sorrow and that there is a day that is coming when we will be reunited with our one true love. But Father, until that day, we pray that you would be at the center of everything that we do. Father, that from the moment that we wake up in the morning until the moment that we lay our head down in the evening, that you would be the center of everything. Lord, that you would be our heart's one true desire, that we would place nothing before you, but seek you first in all that we do. Father, we thank you for your goodness, for your grace, and for your mercy. And we just pray that you would be at the center of it all. Jesus, you're the center. 
be the center of your church. Jesus, be the center of your church. And every knee will bow, and every tongue shall confess you, Jesus. 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 sweeter name but Jesus Jesus we declare your name Jesus Jesus we cry it out Jesus Jesus from the rafters we shout Jesus Jesus the name that has all Come on and profess his name in this place. Come on and lift up his name in his house this morning. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess that he alone is Lord. And Father, this morning as we cry out your name, Lord, we just proclaim that we need you more. More than yesterday, more than ever before. We need you more.
seconds. Come on, say, Lord, I just need you. I don't need anything else. I'm not here to ask you for anything. I just need you. I just need you. More than anything, I need you. Glory to God. I need to know your presence is there. I need to feel you. You know I have needs, but I'm not here today just to ask for my needs to be met. Lord, I just want to have a relationship with you today. I just want to feel you. To be in your presence. Father, we give you praise and glory and honor. For Lord, we do what we do because of you. Lord, you're the reason for all of this. Not a personality, not a person. Not a denomination, not a church, not an individual church, but Lord, you are the reason for every bit of this. We praise you today. While you're standing, I want you to go with me to two places in the Word of God. Two places. Number one, Psalms chapter 90 and verse 12. Psalms 90 and verse 12. And then we're going to go to Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. Psalms 90 and verse 12 says, So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Jesus speaking, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. I want to minister today on the subject, how to make the rest of your life the best of your life. How to make the rest of your life the best of your life. If you would, stretch your hands. Let's pray one more time. Father, as we humbly come before your presence and your throne, we thank you, Lord, that you're a loving Father who cares for us. Lord, you want us, you want to give us the best of the kingdom. You care for us that much. And Father, I pray this morning, Lord, that you would let this word go forth and accomplish what you sent it to do. Lord, that it would hit the mark, that it would not return it to you void, but Lord, that it would touch each and every heart in this place. Lord, that we would follow the pattern of your word and number our days and seek your face and seek your kingdom and seek the king and seek your wisdom, Lord. And Father, that we may apply what we've learned. Lord, that other people may see us and see our life and see what you've done through us and want to know you also. And Lord, we give you the praise, the glory, the honor for it all in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. amen. You may be seated. How to make the rest of your life the best of your life. There's an old saying that goes like this. You are never too old to learn. Would you agree with that? You are never too old To learn. My grandmother used to say that to me all the time. Brother Ed, she'd say, you're never too old. I don't care how how old you get. You're never too old to learn something. If you'll pay attention, something will come along in a day's time, and you will learn something new if you're open to it. And see, here is a lesson in the Word of God that we're never too old to learn. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom, David said. Now, what that means is this. 
It says, teach us to number our days and recognize how few they are. Help us to spend them as we should. That's, that's a valuable lesson, folks. I want to tell you. Can I, can I tell you that someone said that life is like a dollar bill. You can spend it any way you want to, but you can only spend it once. Now, how many of you know that you can spend a dollar bill two ways? You can waste it or you can invest it. And the same is true with our life. We can waste it or we can invest it. Glory to God. You can waste it in the world. You can waste it with, a, with being emotion, with this emotion or that emotion, or being this or being that. Or you can invest it in the kingdom of God and let God make you and mold you into what he wants you to be. Amen. We need to teach ourselves to number our days and apply our hearts to wisdom. Glory to God. So, suppose you were had the opportunity this morning to start your life all over. And you are, you're old enough, though, to understand right from wrong. You're old enough to learn, old enough to love, old enough to really live. If you could ask the Lord Jesus Christ how to make the rest of your life the best of your life, what do you think that he would say to you? What do you think the answer would be to that question? Lord, how do I make the rest of my life the best of my life? I want to tell you, I don't believe we have to wonder what the Lord would say because I've done read it. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, he says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You see, I think you could summarize that verse, what Jesus is saying, up in three words. First things first. You see, now, now I know that sounds kind of simple, but, but I want to tell you, glory to God, that whole oh, glory, if you would begin today, glory to God, if you would let that sink in and let first things be first, I want to tell you, glory to God, if you would consciously and continuously and consistently put things first, it would absolutely transform your life into what God wants it to be. And how many of you know that God wants better things for us than we want for ourselves? Glory to God. God looks at us and says, I see your potential, but we know who we are. Come on now. We know what our past looks like. We know what we've done. We know what our last name is. We know where we've been. We know what we've said. And sometimes, how many of you know that we think we disqualify ourselves from a lot of things that God says that we can do? I got news for you. You need to throw that stinking thinking out and come in here and say, God, mold me and shape me into what you want me to be. I want to be your child. I want to be your vessel. Use me, glory to God. Transform my life. You see, the formula for how to do this is found in that tremendous statement that flowed from the lips of Jesus. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things shall be added unto you. There's three points I want to bring to you, and then I'll get out of your way. Glory to God. But how do you make the rest of your life the best of your life? Number one, you got to set proper priorities. Glory to God, you have got to set proper priorities. What are you talking about? I want to tell you, everything rises and falls right here at this point. If your priorities are not in order, your life will not be in order. If your priorities are not right, you won't be right. You don't have to pray about what the number one priority in life ought to be. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to discuss it. You don't even have to look for it. You just have to do it because Jesus has already told us what our first priority ought to be. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. This is our first priority. If you are a child of God, if you are saved, your first priority is to seek the kingdom of God. Come on now. That word seek means to actively pursue and to go after. It is a present tense word. Lord, it means that every day of our life ought to be seeking first the kingdom of God. You see, in order to seek the kingdom, you first got to seek the king. Oh, glory to God. I felt that right there. Glory to God, if you're going to seek the kingdom, you've got to seek the king because you can't have a kingdom without a king. The first priority of our life ought to be to seek the king of glory every day, praise God. 
Hallelujah. You see, you don't know. Oh, did you know that the believer's life is more than just accepting the Lord? It's a life of seeking the Lord. Hallelujah. After we accept him as Lord, every day of our life, we ought to get up saying, Lord, where are you? Oh, here I am. There you are. I'm here for you. Use me, glory to God. You see, the Lord is not just someone you passively accept. He is someone you actively seek. See, can, I, 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 can tell, I, I can tell everybody in this sanctuary, Lord God, including myself, oh, praise God, something about your relationship with God. Amen. At this very moment, and I may not even know who you are, but I can tell you something about your relationship. I can tell you how much of God you have. Uh Uh-oh. You have all of God you want. No, you didn't hear me. You have all of God that you want. Come on now. If you want more of God, you will passionately seek more of him. Lord God, I like what Sister Gail put on Facebook. She said, you want to come and hear a preacher that is passionate about the product he's pushing? Praise God. I'm telling you, I'm passionate about the product that I'm pushing. And his name is Jesus Christ because he changed me. He saved me. He sanctified me. He baptized me in the Holy Ghost. And I'm passionate about the product of Jesus. I'm passionate about the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. But you have all of God that you want. If your life isn't where it ought to be, you have all of God that you want. This is fact. James 4 and 8 says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Glory to God. God's promise in his word, and if you shall seek me, you will find me. When you shall search for me with all of your heart. Half-hearted searching never finds God. You see, Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. First things first means putting the Father first. You see, Jesus doesn't want a place in your heart. Jesus doesn't even want prominence in your heart. Jesus wants preeminence in your life. You see, Jesus wants the first moments of every day. Jesus wants the first day of every week. Jesus wants the first part of your paycheck. He wants to be first. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ is not interested in being runner up in your life. He's not going to settle for second place. He wants to be king on the throne of your heart, not the co-pilot of your life. You see, not only are we to seek the king, but we ought to seek the kingdom. That's very interesting when you begin to look at what he's saying there. You need to seek the kingdom because the kingdom of God ought to be the, th- ought to be the obsession of our life. Because when you look the word kingdom up, it literally means the rule and the reign of the king in the kingdom. You see, a kingdom is a place where the king rules. And to seek the kingdom of God is to seek the rule and the reign of God over our entire life. Woo! Woo! You see, that pushes some of us out of the way. Pushes every one of us out of the way, actually. Come on, it means that you and I don't rule our life anymore. It means that you and I are not in charge of our life anymore. If we're a child of God, God is not going to step in there right beside you and ask your opinion on how to run your life. He's either God of all or he's not at all. Come on now. Praise God. You see, when we truly seek the king and truly seek the kingdom, you're actually, you're automatically seeking three things. First of all, you're seeking for the glory of the king to be done in your life. You're seeking for your life to show the glory of the king. See, every part and section of your life, every minute, every hour of your time, every pulse and every beat of your heart, every muscle and every fiber of your body ought to be given to the glory of God. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whatever therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Well, now, pastor, I've got to work. Do it for the glory of God. Well, I got to go shopping. Do it for the glory of God. 
Whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Because I'm telling you, we got a sin-soaked world that's dying and going to hell. And they need to see some true children of God that are showing forth the glory of God. Oh, hallelujah. Not only does it mean showing forth the glory of God, it means also to seek the guidance of the king. You see, a loyal subject always wants to do whatever the king would have him do. There's no higher calling in life than to find out what your king wants and then do it. You see, we don't get the concept of a kingdom because we live in a democracy. We have a president. We vote him in and out. But you see, in a kingdom, a king is born into his position. Jesus Christ was born into his position. Come on now. Glory to God, we have a king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And he's not going to abdicate the throne. He's not going to let some little devil come along and tell him he can't rule and reign anymore. Come on now, I'm telling you folks, he is king forever. He will always be king and it is our job to do what he asks us to do, praise God. Every morning of our life, you ought to be, eh, be asking the Lord the same thing Paul did on the road to Damascus. Lord, what would you have me to do? But it also means to seek the government of the king. You see, a loyal subject desires to be controlled by the king. Uh-oh. To be governed by the king. To be ruled by the king. Has it ever occurred to you that if your will was God's will then God's will would always be done in your life and his will would always be done where you are. I can't say that again. But have you ever thought about that for a minute? If his will was your will, you'd be walking in the will of God. My Lord. And it goes back to that verse of scripture where Jesus said, let thy will be done in heaven on earth as it is and can you imagine the perfect will, how it is done in heaven? Can you imagine that when God says go, this and, this and goes, when he says do this, it is done? My Lord, can you imagine if the perfect will of God was being done in your life and in mine? Folks, I want to tell you, when we begin to seek the kingdom, we begin to seek the rule, we begin to seek the government of the king, and we become those loyal subjects that say, speak to me, Lord, use me any way you want to. Glory to God. We got to set the proper priorities. Number two, we got to seek personal wholeness. Wholeness. Praise God. What are you talking about? If the rest of our life is going to be the best of our life, we have got to seek personal wholeness. What are you talking about? Not only did we do we seek his kingdom, but we're to seek his righteousness. You see, that is not only are we to seek God's control over us, but we're also to seek God's character within us. Glory to God. See, the kingdom of God is not only to be inwardly experienced, but it's to be outwardly expressed. Wherever, come on now. It's not just enough for us to say, I'm a child of God. That's great. I'm glad we had an experience once upon a time. But has that experience that happened in you manifested itself outside of you? When people look at you, when they hear you talk, when they see you walk, do they see God or do they see you? You see, if God is ruling over you, then his righteousness is going to be within you because a man's character is simply the outward expression of whatever is controlling him on the inside. You see, faith is always seen by its fruit, but character is always seen by its conduct. You see, as we seek the kingdom of God, people ought to be able to see the kingdom in us. We're never going to make a difference in this world until the world sees a difference, glory to God. See, the real mark of a believer is that he makes it easier for others to believe in God. Now, now what does it mean to seek the righteousness of God? It means that, first of all, that we've got to desire it, praise God. You're not going to go after anything that you don't want. Come on now. You're not going to go after anything you don't want. Or oh, the preacher can stand up here and tell you all day long, you need this, 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 and this. And that's what the Word of God says. But until you get a desire in you to go after it, you're going to sit right where you're at. You see, 
Jesus said, Blessed are those who do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. See, you want to, you ought to want to do right. He meant to live right. Praise God. As much as a hungry man desires food and a thirsty man desires water, you and I ought to want to desire the righteousness of God in us. We've got to obtain it. What do you mean? We are to seek his righteousness. God is not inner, he's not interested in your righteousness and mine. He's not only, hey, come on now, he's not only interested, he is only interested in his righteousness. God is not interested in what you can do for him. He's interested in what he can do through you and me. Amen? Folks, I want to tell you, it'll be a great day, a great day in the house of God when we understand the difference between self-righteousness and God's righteousness. Paul, after he was saved, made this one of his goals in Philippians 3 and 9. He said, and being found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. You see, that's exactly why Christ came and Jesus died, that we might have the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him glory to God we got to understand we cannot do anything within ourselves. we've got to get rid of self self is killing the church carnality Paul dealt with carnality is killing us we got to get back to seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness and last of all when we do that glory to God you're going to see promised prosperity. Oh, now, Pastor, you're about to preach prosperity. Listen to me. I'm going to preach the Word of God. You call it what you want to. Praise God. But this much I do know. He said this, and all these things shall be added unto you. That lets me know, Lord God, if we're doing our part and seeking the kingdom and seeking his righteousness, Lord God, God this is God's part. Oh, come on, somebody. How many of you know if we'll do our part, God will always do his part. Amen. Hey, oh, hallelujah. And how many of you know that God's not slack on his part? Amen. It's usually a slackness on our part of doing what we're supposed to do. But when we step up and we seek his kingdom and his righteousness, my God, I'm telling you, the windows of heaven are about to open above you, and God's going to pour out a blessing that you have no room to receive. Woo! Glory to God. You're going to see promised prosperity. Lord God, oh, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, what things was the Lord referring to? I want to tell you, he was talking about all the things that people worry about in this life. You go back to verse 19 of chapter 6, and we're told that people worry about finances. Jesus said, lay not up for yourself treasure upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, praise God. Then he said in verse 25, we're told people worry about food. Just saying. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is, your life, is not your life more than meat and the body more than raiment? In verse 28, we're told that people worry about the clothes. And why take your thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. How they grow and they toil not, neither do they spin. I want to tell you folks, all of these things, amen, are things that we need. And that's why the Lord said in verse 32, For all these things doth the Gentile seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of these. Now the Lord has promised that if you'll seek his kingdom and his righteousness, you will have the things you need. Philippians 4 and 19, Paul said, but my God, somebody say, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Let me tell you, God doesn't give us everything we want, but he does supply our needs. You see, one of the greatest blessings of God is found in those things that he doesn't give us. Have you ever thought about some of the prayers you prayed and God didn't answer them? 
You ever wondered why? Because God understood that if you got what you wanted, glory to God, it would cause you to go a different direction than he wanted you to go. <laughs> Publisher's clearing the house. Paper come to my house the other day. My wife looked at that. She said, whoa, $5,000 a week for life. Glory. <laughs> She said, I'd quit work. She, she looked at me and said, what would you do? I said, well, I said, the Lord's never going to let this happen. <laughs> Number one, well, now, pastor, I, I doesn't hear you. See, the Holy Spirit lets me hear some thoughts. And I done heard somebody say, that's not faith, pastor. <laughs> it's not faith on this. I'll tell you why. Because the Lord knows if that happened in my life, I'd go, a I'd go a direction that wouldn't be pleasing to him. How many times have we let the devil entice us with things that we thought it was the Lord opening the door and we walked through it and the devil's led us down the wrong path? You see, I thank God for the things the Lord has spared me from. Praise God, the things he hasn't let me see. You see, God doesn't always give us what we want, but he always gives us the best. And sometimes his best comes through difficulties and pain. You see, if we hadn't went through anything, we wouldn't know his character as a healer. If we hadn't went through nothing, we wouldn't know his character as a deliverer. Oh, my God, haven't I got anybody in here to help me this morning? If we didn't go through some pain and some suffering, we wouldn't know him as the all-sufficient Lord and Master of the universe. Glory to God. I'm telling you, if we hadn't gone through anything, we wouldn't know him as a faithful God that he is. Come on now. You see, when life hurts and doesn't make sense, God is faithful. Not because of the good things he gives us. He's faithful because he keeps his promises. God is always going to give us what we need. See, I heard a story the other day about two stores that were across the street from one another. Glory to God, and they were highly competitive, always trying to outdo the other. The manager of one store walked out, Lord God, to the front of his store, nailed up this big old sign out there over the front door, and it says, if you want it, we got it. Well, the manager from the store across the road Thought about seeing that sign, thought about it for a minute, went back into his store, and after a while, come back out with another sign, nailed it on the front of his store, and it said, if we don't have it, you don't need it. <laughs> I can tell you something right now. No matter what you may think, if you don't have it, it's because God knows that at this point in your life, you don't need it. You see, what the Lord was trying to teach us here was this. It's our job to serve God. It's his job to supply our needs. Now, most people want to get that backwards. Most people think it's our job to, to, it's our job to supply us, and it's God's job to serve us. You know, if we could, I think we would sing that, that hymn, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. I think we'd sing it like this. I'll have my own way, Lord. I'll have my own way. I'll be the potter and you can be the clay. I'll mold you and make you after my will while we are waiting, yielded and sealed. You see, it's exactly the attitude that cuts off the blessings of God when we think we don't need Him. You see, in a real sense... We've been called to live from hand to mouth, but it's all right if it's his hand to our mouth. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Glory to God. I'm telling you, God can supply your need. There was a, there was a story of a missionary that come to me the other day. I, I read it and it come back to me. This missionary, glory out, he was getting ready to embark and go away into a foreign country. And as he was getting on the ship, glory to God, a, a wealthy person, a friend of his come to him. Glory to God, met him there on the game plant and, and said, listen, I'm going to give you an envelope. And it's sealed. Glory to God, his friend said, you take this envelope and if any time while you're overseas, you come to a place where you have exhausted every other possibility and you 
don't know where else to turn and you have a need you can't, that you can't meet, please open this envelope. Well, the missionary took the envelope, thanked him, put it in his pocket, went up the gangplank and stayed on the mission field for 20 years. At the end of that 20 years, he came back home, walked down that same gangplank, met that same wealthy friend, and he returned the envelope back to him, still sealed, still unopened. And the friend said, nah. and the, the missionary said, never did I come to a place where I did not know where to turn nor what to do because God has supplied every need I've ever had. Praise God. Yes. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. In closing, I'm done. I'm going to tell you, if you want the rest of your life to be the best of your life, you need to allow Jesus Christ to be your Lord. Let me say that one more time. If you want the rest of your life to be the best of your life, you need to get away from you and away from those friends that tell you you don't need this or that and you need to let Jesus be Lord. You need to put him first, live every moment for him, and he'll take care of the rest. You see, it's easy to think our problems are too small and insignificant to be of any concern to God. Anybody ever done that before? I can handle this myself, God. I can handle it myself. But have you ever noticed that the moment that we get our hands on it, that it begins to grow? And the more we begin to deal with it, the, more, the bigger it gets. Until pretty soon we had to say, Lord, I can't handle it no more. And the Lord, the, the, listen, the Lord's not going to scold us and say, you know, you should have brought it to me to begin with. The Lord says, listen, I love you. And you can cast every care upon me. It doesn't matter how big or how small. I love you. I love you. I'm concerned about you. Peter said it, casting all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Glory to God. Just because he's a creator of the universe doesn't mean you got to keep something till it gets big to take to him. You see, when I read that verse of scripture, 1 Peter 5 and 7, casting all your care upon him for he cares for you, this is what I get out of that. I, I can hear God in my mind saying, why don't you just let me worry about that? Why don't you just let me worry about that? Because I have a tendency. I'm about like my grandmother on my dad's side. She was a worry wart. My dad always told me, said, said, my mama worries about everything. And I have a tendency to do that. I want things to be done. I want them to be done in order. I want them to be done right. Maybe that's, maybe that's OCD. I don't know what kind of alphabet I got behind my name. Glory to God. I had a lady come to the house, to mom's house yesterday, a solar rocker. And she had her five-year-old grandson there. And she said, we took this boy in when he was 18 months old and said, he's got a long list of alphabet behind his name. He's AC, he's, he's ADHD or whatever, PSTD, whatever. And I'm like, oh my Lord. Sometimes I feel like that's, that's what I am. But I can hear the Lord saying, don't worry about it. I've got it. My mom always reminded me about a message I preached long ago. She was my biggest fan, you know that. She always, she said, son, you preached a message years ago. God's got this. And there comes a time in every one of our lives when we've got to be reminded God's got this. No matter what it is, no matter what you're going through, God's got this. And I said, yes, Lord things going on I said Lord I'm going to let you worry about it I'm just going to trust stand with me